Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the second flight test of the Up Air uh, One uh, 4K Digital Edition. Uh, the first time I have uh, tested it, I had a lot of issues uh, with the camera and uh, the drone connecting to the uh, Wi-Fi with the mobile phone app. And uh, all of those problems were related to the micro SD card that sits in the camera. So if the camera cannot initialize because of the uh, micro SD card, it will not make the drone work, <coughs> which is rather uh, interesting because at least they could uh, give you a message that uh, this drone does not work because it needs a micro SD card or did you throw an error. Uh, micro SD card fault, you can fly the drone but you cannot record. Nope, that was not happening. Uh, only what was happening, this was constantly crashing or not recording. So I have uh, bought a new, uh, brand new micro SD card. It's, uh, uh, 3 U uh, UHS 3 uh, speed rating only uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, memory because this drone will only work up with 32 gigabytes it will not work with 64 so I bought a small card a very fast card which is capable of 4k recording in uh, the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 3 and 4 drone so it should work on uh, this drone also in uh, 4k resolution so I'm going to take it for a test flight today is extremely windy I hope that you can hear my voice because uh, uh, the action camera now has an external uh, microphone which is hidden somewhere and uh, uh, I hope that uh, you'll hear me more clearly and not only with wind noise like I did last time uh, that's the conditions it's been windy almost two weeks so definitely I have a urge to fly and testing so I have to adapt to that so let's now initialize it and uh, try to take it into the air so I'm going to power on the transmitter first I'm going to unlock the mobile phone also going to power on the quadcopter battery and the drone let's see if I can now see the Wi-Fi connection I have also added a supplementary weight to the camera to balance it properly because previously uh, it had a kind of uh, weird shake and that was because the camera when it's powered off it's leaned to one side because it's not balanced it it's not balanced statically All right up air is now connected I'm fine with that, so I'm going to open the app, enter camera view, and we have image, we have enough battery, uh, and we have weak GPS signal, so I'm going to let it settle. Only four satellites, now there are six. The more the better, so I'm just going to let it sit a bit to get a few more. So we have 10 satellites now, uh, that is very good, let's check the camera settings quickly, so I'm in 4K resolution, that is nice, I'm going to stop video recording and recording it started and hopefully now it will record 4K footage without uh, doing stupid stuff, so that is return to home, loiter and what mode is this? I'm going to check and now I'm in position hold which is the mode I want in uh, this crazy wind. So let's see if I can arm the motors. Motors are armed. So let's take it up into the air. I did that crazy takeoff because of the wind. It's extremely powerful today, you can see the aircraft is kind of uh, balancing into the air uh, it's 
really fighting the wind but as you can see the digital edition is really stable uh, it's impressive uh, how far they come came uh, with this aircraft the analog FPV version uh, was sometimes all over the place nowhere as uh, stable as this one as you can see it's almost like a phantom quadcopter so this is amazing so I'm going to put a bit some more altitude in it FPV image is very sharp very clear so I'm going to get some footage with it and as you can see this thing is also very fast the only downside of it is uh, that it doesn't have a 3 axis gimbal it's only a 2 axis gimbal so the yaw axis of the quadcopter is not stabilized so if it's fighting the wind and shaking that way uh, you will see that in the video because it's, it is, cannot be compensated by the gimbal of course you can smooth that footage in uh, video editing and that's an idea of how to improve video quality uh, and uh, remove some of the shake I do hope that uh, after adding uh, that extra weight to the camera uh, I won't uh, get all that uh, crazy shakes I had before but definitely you will not get very smooth footage in uh, such crazy wind like uh, we have today and uh, if you really want to get some nice video footage uh, you should uh, uh, try to film when uh, you have good weather outside uh, when you don't have such kind of uh, crazy wind but as I told you I had the urge to test it to see if the camera works because that was the main purpose of the test to see if the 4k recording really works or not and uh, how good the image quality is so now I'm going to put some more altitude into it so it's going up 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 and away it's doing vertically 3.2 meters per second which is very good so I don't want to get too high or too far because because it's safer that way and it's this crazy wind and if I take it too far I may be in the situation of uh, trying to fight the wind back and uh, remain without power so I'm now at let's see where's the height 120 meters I'm not going to go over that it's far enough uh, let's do a, a gentle panoramic spin get some footage around so I'm in a remote area no houses nearby only a road and some houses under construction Something goes, something goes bad. It's not going to be trouble for anyone. And those two things down there are uh, some uh, wreckage yards with dismembered cars, so no damage <laughs> there. If something happens, so that's fine. Let's see. As you can see, the camera can uh, be tilted upward you can see the sky from it which is interesting because it, it doesn't show the props in the video and someday maybe I, I'm going to fly over that uh, forest over there but today is not today and I don't want to do that thing and uh, that may be enough video from that height so I'm going to uh, get it down but get it down against the wind and flying against the wind so it doesn't enter in a vortex wind state and crash it down so I'm doing now 5 meters per second against the wind and it's going down with almost 2 meters per second which is very good those are some good uh, good performances uh, performance indicators of uh, flying in uh, such kind of weather with a GPS quad this large usually GPS quads are uh, rather slow when you fly them in GPS position hold because they need to refresh that GPS very quick and um, counter the wind and uh, collect data from the barometer so there's a lot of calculation to be taken into account and uh, that reduces the speed because 
uh, it needs that to be stable. Of course, if you disable the all these uh, things like GPS position holds the drone will fly a lot more faster but it will go with the wind so I'm going to do also some flight over this dirt road here for my footage collection you can see how it fights the wind it goes it yaws a bit left a bit right so it's connect uh, it's uh, countering the wind get it back I'm very close to the ground now only seven meters high I'm now doing full speed with wind from one side and it's at almost eight meters per second which is impressive uh, and the wind is from uh, one side as I told so it's not fighting the wind there it goes as you can see it's a large and gentle flyer but also can pack some speed in it you don't expect it to be such kind of acrobat look at that you, you can funnel it but against the wind it's a bit more slow and totally normal but definitely a pleasant flyer a stable flyer my only regret is the 2-axis gimbal until now it could be a lot more better with having your stabilization but we are going to have to settle for that it's not a very expensive quadcopter so It's a, it's a, let's call it mid-range quadcopter because it is around uh, 300 dollars, so not really cheap, but not that expensive. But uh, closer to it is the Xiaomi Mi Drone 4K, which has a three-axis gimbal and a lot more performance. It has good flight time and so on. So uh, that's uh, a great improvement over the upper air because it has a much better camera and gimbal but still this is a fun quadcopter I do hope to see uh, this model released with a 3-axis gimbal <laughs> I have a problem with the 3-axis gimbal as you can see I still keep repeating that but maybe someone will hear me and now I'm going to stop the video recording let's hope it stops so I think it has stopped and I'm going to go into photo mode let's see if it takes photo yes it takes photos yay so this works really nice so I'm going to go up again but not that much because with all that wind uh, the battery is uh, dropping really fast I'm at 35% I'm not that worried because you know that uh, this shows uh, voltage drop greater than the battery capacity is really uh, is in that moment so uh, I do have some safety in it for example now that I'm not climbing uh, the battery gone up to 42% so I'm going to take yet again a picture in that direction and now I'm going to rotate take a picture in that direction Another picture in that direction that should suffice so let's get the bird down I'm going to try to hand catch it because it's very windy and uh, if it's very close to the ground I don't want to have it uh, tumble or crash with the propellers uh, in the dirt I'm going to try to take it from the air and hopefully it will not cut my fingers off more important is if it uh, will shut down the motors while I hold it in uh, my hand because some quadcopters really do not like hand catching they will not 
they will feel that they have not touched the ground and will not turn off the motors. So I'm going to let it settle a bit and now and that was really nice because it uh, cooperated with me and uh, had uh, shut down the motors avoiding unnecessary drama that could have caused so it seems to be a perfect flight battery gone up to 55% uh, so it's that voltage drop I was telling you about now it's 65% so you can fly it a lot more but it's tricky because the battery is very low C rated only 10 C uses a lot of power it's very cold outside it's around uh, 0 degrees 1 degree something like that so with all this wind puts a lot of stress on the battery and uh, makes the voltage drop very fast now it's at 70 uh, no it's at 57 uh, percent uh, so it's like charging right so i'm going to end this video um, video was stopped so hopefully it will not crash the file and now we have 4k recording i'm going to turn off the battery first And now the transmitter and uh, that was it for uh, this test i hope that you have enjoyed it i hope that the camera has now worked and i have made justice for the upper quadcopter and uh, you can get a better opinion on it be sure to follow my next uploads uh, where i'm going to test this against uh, some other quadcopters in a similar price range and um, performance such as the hubson h109 uh, the phantom 3 pro and the Xiaomi Mi Drone 4K I'm going to try somehow to do a comparison between all those four drones that will be interesting to do but uh, hopefully I'm going to manage to do that so until then, bye bye!